Tin Man Real Time is a new software application from Tin Man Systems that allows the uh, real time monitor, uh, control, and or automation of local or remote systems with any number of sensors and or actuators. And essentially this is a Windows based software application. It allows you to set up UDP data sources and uh, UDP can be delivered through um, Ethernet or wireless um, and UDP data targets. I'm going to, uh, just to get things running here, I'm going to run this in demo mode and you just simply click demo mode on or off. Just to show uh, how this works, I'm just going to drag and drop a couple of these controls to the screen. And I got a pitch roll, traditional pitch roll, and you got an extended pitch roll gauge with five sensors, some uh, very simple vertical and uh, horizontal charts, uh, some snap value controls that function a lot like uh, Legos, if you will, and snap together and help a, a busy screen stay nice and orderly. And those can be set up with, um, uh, with respect to sensors. Um, uh, this would be a double click to select a set of sensors and would instantly populate a set of rows that would represent data dynamically. Um, and uh, this is a data scroll uh, that would ultimately show data right now with simulated data. Nothing shows there, but the line chart uh, would uh, represent uh, live uh, time-based chronological data. And uh, that can be, uh, there's quite a bit of flexibility with how that data is represented. Um, and then we have the column chart, of course, uh, that also shows data, and that can be sized in any way uh, that is uh, convenient. And there's no limit to the number of sensors that are tracked, nor the number of controls that are placed on the screen. And uh, you have uh, near complete flexibility of how you represent that data. And um, uh, for instance, the uh, one of the gauges here, this is a uh, simple gauge with no border, and we can specify uh, the type of face, a chronological face, 0, 0 to 12 or 1 to 12, or 360 degrees, uh, 0 to 10, uh, 0 to 100, or a partial 0 to 100 gauge. And you can see how the face automatically changes and adjusts in the scaling and representation of data. Uh, and as well, you have the ability to change the color of that face and uh, to whatever is convenient. And there's a smart method of uh, representing the tick marks in white or black. And so this is all very uh, simple, but very convenient and nice stuff. Uh, but it does allow you to customize quite extensively a screen. Uh, this is a bordered circular gauge, and you have various ways to represent the borders and certainly uh, ways to represent the face of that gauge. Uh, this is the semicircular gauge. Uh, and let's go ahead and select uh, fuel. And so when you take into account the borders and the colors and the types of gauges, you have somewhere in the order of six or seven thousand variations uh, just with the circle uh, and semicircle gauges. So now let's go ahead and uh, bring in some Android cell phone data. I've got an Android uh, S5 here. We're going to send in accelerometer, gyro, and magnetometer data. Each of those sensors uh, sends five sub-element uh, values. And so in Tin Man real time, what we'll do is we'll set up a sensor template. We'll import that. We'll set up the port first. Uh, we'll say uh, send this data. We'll call it cell. Send it to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And, uh, and then what we'll do, uh, we'll specify various uh, 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 data elements or the, the type of structure of that data. And we can see that it's already flowing and streaming almost instantly in, in real time. Uh, we'll turn the simulator on so we can see the data kind of flowing. Uh, we're going to allow the cell phone to continue to sell the, uh, send the data in. And what we can do is set up a sensor data template map. Uh, and again, this data here is being sent uh, somewhere on the order of 20, 30, 40, 50 times a second uh, for each of those sensors. Um, but let's go ahead and import a CSV file that contains the sub-element listings for each of those sensors. So down here in my data sources uh, map pane, I can import CSV files that allow me to instantly and conveniently map, so I don't have to keep setting up those sensors in here. You can see we've got three here, accelerometer, gyro, and magnetometer. And so what we can do now is just add a gauge to the screen, double click, specify the auto-populated combo box for which sensor and which uh, sub-elements to show, and we can see that this very simple control we've just added to the screen is probably the fastest way you can get data up on the screen. 
And uh, this is just a quick way to look at all sub-elements of a particular sensor. Uh, and so these UDP datagrams that are coming in and that are comma separated in this case uh, contain five values for each of those sensors. And again, uh, just taking a peek at the cell phone here, you can see that it's still sending wirelessly to this IP address in that port 12345 all of this sensor data. And so what we can do now is we can uh, actually look at some other things and see how um, adding a chart or some uh, maybe a column chart or a, or a line chart would look as we continue to see this data. And again, we're showing the data continuing to flow uh, from that UDP data source. The next thing we'll do is we'll set up a simple column chart and we'll just grab one sub-element value uh, from one of the sensor gauges. We'll choose the accelerometer here and the x-axis value for that. And we specify uh, what I believe is uh, minus 20 to 20, the range for that column, and, uh, and then we'll plot it. And we'll uh, put that on the screen. You can see that uh, we have a chart here, and while we're uh, receiving the data and viewing it, we can actually shake the phone and see the, uh, the values change. Let's also add a, a line chart. In some cases, uh, data that comes in time series is better viewed on a scrolling horizontal line chart. And uh, let's do the same thing, and we'll grab that same value x, and we'll give it a color, add it to the legend. We'll get the right scaling here. And, um, and we'll also add uh, some other elements. Let's go in and uh, get the, the Y value as well. Give that a different color, and uh, you get the idea. This is pretty basic stuff, uh, but it does make it convenient, especially when you have a lot of sensors. Here we only have three, but in many cases, especially in the next segment of this video, we're going to actually show a, a flight simulation software sending lots of data. Uh, but here we see our three lines of data, uh, and that's in time. I'm going to shake the phone a little bit. And you can see that uh, we're, we're getting a response in the system. And so this is pretty straightforward stuff, and that's the idea. What real time does is it enables us to very quickly and in real time establish visualization of multiple sensors coming in from multiple UDP sources. Here we're only using one UDP source. I'm expanding and shaking the phone a little bit here. Uh, but you can see that uh, we're getting uh, really good feedback on the screen here. And we can change the time scale of this axis as well. We can make it faster or slower. But let's move on to something a little more complex. What I'm going to do is just launch a sample uh, file. Uh, I'm going to run this. Uh, what I've got is an, um, about 37 sensors being monitored through UDP. Uh, uh, data transmission uh, from another system that happens to be on this system. It's a uh, flight simulation software product uh, called X-Plane. And if I reduce uh, the uh, Tin Man real-time application here and bring up X-Plane really quickly, uh, we can see, and I'm going to unpause that, and we get a little background noise here. We're sitting in the cockpit of a 747 uh, simulated, of course. And uh, if we get outside this aircraft, and um, jump right back into the cockpit, and uh, we've got all the typical controls. This is quite a piece of software from uh, X-Plane. But what we're showing is, uh, now what X-Plane provides us is an excellent uh, simulation environment to get access to uh, what is about 134 different sensors on the system and it delivers that via Ethernet or uh, wireless UDP um, and uh, these are datagrams that include uh, floating point values and sensor IDs etc and very much like a real physical system that might be a drone or external robot or uh, any any form of a uh, external or even uh, same local system that produces data that we want to track and, and visualize and perhaps even control uh, through UDP commands. I'm going to use the joystick uh, and I'm going to turn the ailerons and we can see that um, the X-plane as I turn the joystick here we can see the corresponding changes in the real-time graph uh, line chart uh, within uh, Tin Man real-time and uh, likewise we've got a pitch uh, forward and backward on the elevator uh, that we see the associated line chart and that's just simply a one of the um, uh, uh, elements sensor data elements that we can use and drag and drop on the screen 
and of course we can set different time uh, domains for that chart. We can give it longer duration or shorter duration on the fly as things are running. We'll leave it at 10 seconds. Uh, we've also got engine thrust and uh, various other meters on here. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, power up the aircraft and we'll just uh, we'll see that the engine thrust uh, you can see I've turned up the the uh, actual thrusters on the four engines and um, go ahead and jump outside the aircraft now and um, put our flaps down and uh, go ahead and release the brakes and uh, have the aircraft move down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to control the joystick and uh, we can watch a little bit of that aircraft uh, go down the uh, runway here and we'll keep an eye on the flight gauges and you can see I've got a little bit of rudder control here and um, you can see our pitch roll gauge is starting to pick up uh, the data and represent the data visually and uh, pretty soon here I'll get to uh, take off speed and um, uh, here we go we're lifting off and we can see our pitch roll gauge uh, changing flaps down and gear up and that gives us a, a good idea of how we can set up some basic sensors to monitor uh, a select set of uh, input data sensors from uh, another system and uh, this of course is on the same system this uh, this simulated 747 uh, and we chose that software because of its uh, um, uh, realism and the fact that it uh, we can choose which uh, UDP data elements to send from its sensor set. But uh, uh, thank you for this uh, opportunity to introduce you to Tin Man Real Time. There are uh, a host of other features to show, and we will do that in future videos. One in particular is seamlessly integrating with Tin Man Builder's IDE and sending this data on to Tin Man Builder and allowing it to make uh, automated decisions and sending those back to this external system. Thank you very much.